At the beginning of this section of notes, please graph the following three lines. The first line is y equals 2x. That is an example of direct variation. The next is y equals 2x plus 3. And the last is y equals negative 1 half x. That's 1 half times x. Please graph all three of these on the same coordinate axis. And if you would label each line with its equation, that'll help as we move forward through this lesson. Please pause while you do that graphing and resume this once you have those, less, those lines graphed. First, we want to look at parallel lines. Parallel lines go in the same direction forever and ever without ever intersecting each other. We know from the equation of the line that if we have two lines that are parallel, they're going to have the same slope. They'll have different y-intercepts, but being parallel and having the same slope, those two mean the same thing. So if you take a look at the lines that you graphed on the beginning of this presentation, you graphed y equals 2x plus 3 and y equals 2x, they both have a slope of 2, and so what you've graphed should be parallel there. It is also true that parallel lines always have the same slope, and that lines with the same slope are parallel. Both of those statements are true. Here's another line, y equals 2x minus 4. That's not one I had asked you to graph, but you can tell that because it has the same slope, that is a slope of 2, it's going to be parallel to both y equals 2x plus 3 and y equals 2x. So if I ask you to write an equation of a line that is parallel to a different line, a problem might look like this. Write an equation of a line that passes through the point negative 3 comma negative 5. So imagine that I put the point negative 3, negative 5 on a coordinate axis, and I'm going to draw a line through that point. And I want the line that I draw to be parallel to a second line. The second line is y equals 3x minus 1. So to do this problem, you would draw the line y equals 3x minus 1 on your graph, and then you would plot the point negative 3, comma 5 on your graph, and you would draw a line through the point that's parallel to the given line. You can do this all without graphing anything, though, and here's how you can do that. Think about the equation of the new line. It says write an equation of a line that passes through, so we're going to write the equation of a new line. The new line is going to have the general form y equals mx plus b. I need to find the m, the slope of my new line, and the b, the y-intercept of my new line. Right away I know that if my new line is going to be parallel to the line that they gave me, that the two lines have to have the same slope. The line they gave me has a slope of 3, so my new line has to have a slope of 3. So the m in the equation for my new line has to be 3. Next, I need to find the y-intercept. So what I can do is I can take the slope that I found in step 1 and the single point that they gave us, negative 3, negative 5, and plug that into the equation and solve for b. So remember, we're looking for something that is y equals mx plus b. We're going to substitute 3 for m. We found that from the parallel line. Negative 3 for x and negative 5 for y. That negative 3 and negative 5 come from the one point that's on our line. Notice now we have an equation that has a single variable, and the variable is b. So we're solving for b. When we do that, we get that b has to be 4. So now we found, remember that our goal was to write the equation of a new line in y equals mx plus b format. We found the m, and now we found the b. So we can simply replace m and b in this equation. We're going to plug in 3 for m and 4 for b, and we'll have y equals 3x plus 4. So the line y equals 3x plus 4 is parallel to the line that was given and passes through the point negative 3, negative 5. Next, I'll give you a similar problem, and I'd like you to pause this presentation and you try it and see how you were able to do. When you resume the presentation, it'll walk you through the steps of how to do this problem. So the problem asks us to write an equation of a line that passes through the point negative 2, comma 11 and is parallel to the line that's specified here, y equals negative x plus 5. 
So please pause this presentation while you try and write the equation, and then when you resume, I'll explain to you how to do it. All right, so you've made an attempt at it. Let's see how you did. The first thing that we need to do is to identify the slope of our new line. The equation that was given had a slope of negative 1. Even though there is not a 1 in front of the x, it's that coefficient that's there even though we don't write it. So the slope of this is negative 1. So we know that the slope of a parallel line is also going to be negative 1. So we found the m in y equals mx plus b for our new line. Next, we need to find the y-intercept. What we can do is use the slope of negative 1 and the point that was given, negative 2 comma 11. We're going to write the slope-intercept form of the line, and we're going to substitute 11 for y, negative 1 for m, and negative 2 for x. The negative 1 for m, that's the slope that we found in the previous step, and the 11 and negative 2 for y and x, those are the coordinates of the one point on the line that we know. When we do that, we have an equation that we're going to solve for b. And as we solve that, we see that b has to be 9. So now we know the m and the b for our new equation. We're going to replace the m with negative 1 and the 9 for b. And so we end up with y equals negative 1x, or just negative x, plus 9. So the line y equals negative x plus 9 is parallel to the line that was given and passes through the point negative 2 comma 11. Next we're going to look at perpendicular lines. The word perpendicular means lines that meet at right angles. So what's shown here, one in blue and one in sort of a purplish color, are two lines that meet at a right angle. Two things are true when we compare the slopes of perpendicular lines. The first is that their slopes have the opposite sign. So if one of them is positive, the other is negative. If one is negative, the other is positive. The other is that the slopes are reciprocals of each other. That means write the slope in its fraction form and then turn it upside down. So for the two lines that are shown here, one has a slope of 2. If we write 2 in its fraction form, that's 2 over 1, the reciprocal would be 1 half. So notice the two lines shown, if you compare their slopes, their slopes are opposite reciprocals of each other. They have opposite signs and their magnitude is a reciprocal of each other. So a question that you might come across on a test says, determine whether these two lines are perpendicular. So here's a picture. It's a picture of the state flag of Arizona. And what they've done is they've drawn two lines, line A and line B, sort of radiating out from the star. And if you just look at those two lines, A and B, if you kind of eyeball it, it looks like they might be perpendicular, but it's a little hard to tell. So we're going to use the math to decide if they're actually perpendicular. The first line has the equation 12y equals negative 7x plus 42. The second line has the equation 11y equals 16x minus 52. To decide if these two lines are perpendicular, we need to find the slopes of these two lines. And then we'll see if their slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. So we're going to write both of the equations in slope-intercept form, because once the equation's in slope-intercept form, it's easy to see the slope. So for line A, we'll divide everything on both sides of the equation by 12. So it looks like the slope of line A is negative 7 twelfths. For line B, we'll divide everything on both sides of the equation by 11. So the slope of line B is 16 elevenths. When we compare negative 7 twelfths with 16 elevenths, those two numbers are not opposite reciprocals of each other. It's true that one is positive and one is negative, but they're not reciprocals of each other. And so that means that the two lines that have these slopes are not exactly perpendicular. They're close, but they're not exactly perpendicular. Next, we're going to try writing the equation of a line that passes through a point and is perpendicular to a given line. So the line that we have is y equals 2x plus 3. I want to draw a new line that's perpendicular to that one. And I want my new line to pass through the point 4 comma negative 5. So 
what I need to do is I need to find the M and the B for my new line, the slope and the Y intercept for my new line. The easiest to find is the slope. The equation that we already have, the line that we're starting with, has a slope of 2. And we want a perpendicular line. So its slope is going to be an opposite reciprocal. So switch the sign, make it from positive to negative, and then flip the number upside down. Go from 2 to 1 half. So the slope of the perpendicular line, instead of being 2, is going to be negative 1 half. Next, we need to find the y-intercept. We're going to use the slope and the point that was given to do that. We know that the slope of the new line has to be negative a half, and we know that we have to plug in 4 for x and negative 5 for y to make the line pass through that particular point. When we do that and we solve for b, we see that b has to be negative 3. So the equation of the new line, we're going to replace the m with the negative 1 half and the b with negative 3. So we end up with y equals negative 1 half x minus 3. If I were to graph that line, y equals negative 1 half x minus 3, it would be perpendicular to the line that was given in the original problem, and it would pass through the point 4 comma negative 5. Next, I'd like you to try this one. Pause this presentation once you've worked through it, and let's see how you did. So here are two lines. Let's find out if they're perpendicular. Go ahead and get these both into slope-intercept form, and then compare their slopes to see if you think they're perpendicular. Once you've done that, restart this so you can see if you were right. All right, so you think you've got this one? Well, if we take line A and rearrange it into slope-intercept form, we get y equals negative 1 half x minus 6. If we take line B and we get it into slope-intercept form, we have y equals 3 halves x minus 4. If we compare the slopes of the two lines, negative 1 half and 3 over 2, those slopes are not negative reciprocals of each other, so lines A and B are not perpendicular. Next, you try. Try writing an equation of a line that passes through the point 4 comma 3 and is perpendicular to the line that's given. Pause this presentation while you try it, and then when you think you've got it, watch to see how you did. All right, so you think you've got it. Well, we know that the slope of our new line is going to be the opposite sign, so instead of positive, it'll be negative, and it's going to have the reciprocal, so instead of 4, it's going to be 1 fourth. So the slope of our new line is negative 1 fourth. Now, we need to find the y-intercept of this line. We're going to use the slope and the point that we know needs to be on the line to write that equation. So, first we'll write the slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b, and we're going to replace the y, the m, and the x with numbers that we know. We'll substitute in 4 for x and 3 for y, because the point 4 comma 3 is on the line, and negative 1 fourth for m to make the line perpendicular. When we do that and solve for b, we get the b equals 4. So if we write the equation of the new line then, we replace the m in it with negative 1 fourth and the b with 4. So we get the equation y equals negative 1 fourth x plus 4. That's a line that's perpendicular to the line that was specified in the problem and passes through the point 4 comma 3.